Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to get started working with our database. We're going to be working with MySQL or MySQL, though as we'll be using Doctrine, you can use others such as Postgres or SQLite. However, if you do, then you may not be able to complete this tutorial in full as you will need MySQL to work properly with Doctrine migrations. Now this isn't a beginner's intro to working with the database, so if you're completely new to working with Doctrine and the database at this point, please see the show notes where I'll link to a more suitable tutorial. Now to allow ourselves to learn a little bit more about Symfony, we're going to create our own fixtures by way of a Symfony console command. To be completely clear, fixtures are basically a set of commands that we can run against our database to make sure that it's populated with some known data. This will take us only so far, but it'll allow us to learn a few things about the way the console commands work, but beyond the point we will actually need to switch to using a fixtures library. In our case, we're gonna use Doctrine Fixtures, but just be aware that in the real world, you would probably start with Doctrine Fixtures rather than trying to roll your own. But again, we're only doing that to help us learn. So because we're working with the database, you need to make sure that you've got the correct parameters set up inside Parameters YAML. In my case, I need to make sure that I'm pointing at my database server, which is 192.168.0.21. My database name can be anything. So in my case, it's going to be wallpaper underscore site. It doesn't matter what that is because I'm going to go ahead and create it in a sec. And my database username and password are db user and db password. With those settings in, I can jump across to the command line, do a php bin console doctrine database create. You can see there, whatever database name I'd have put in, it's going to go ahead and create for me. And if your database already exists at this point, it will give you an error there. With our database created, I'm going to go ahead and create my first entity. So I'm going to use a generator for this. So it's php bin console doctrine generate entity. I'm going to use app bundle. There's tab in there to get to the completed version of app bundle. And my entity is just going to be called wallpaper. I'm going to accept annotation as a configuration format. We get the ID field for free. So the fields I want, I'm going to be file name, which is a string. 255 is fine. Nullable, well, we don't want it to be nullable because it's file name and it won't be unique in this case. We're also going to have a slug, which is a string, 255, not nullable, but in this case, it's going to be unique. And then we'll have a width, which will be an integer and a height, which again will be an integer. Now, if you make a mistake on any of this, just press control C which will break out of this process, but you will need to start again and fill it in from scratch, unfortunately. And on the last field, if we just hit return, then it finishes the generation process for us. You can see here it's created an entity directory because one didn't exist. And then inside that directory, it's given us the wallpaper, but also it's given us the repository class. So that's where we can store any custom queries that we create, which we won't need straight away, but it's nice to have. So as you can see the entity directory and the wallpaper repository, and inside our wallpaper, you can see when we run a command to update our schema, we'll get a table created, it's called wallpaper. And inside we should expect to see these columns. Now, if we were to jump across to our database at this point, and we were to refresh the tables, it's a little bit unintuitive, but we don't yet have a table for this wallpaper. So whilst the entity has been generated, we haven't in any way updated the database to reflect that change. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. There's probably more than a couple, but there's a couple that sort of jump out immediately. And what I'll do is I'll just get rid of all of that. And I'll do a PHP bin console doctrine schema update. This should give us a bit of output that says we can either force through the change. We'll have a look at what that change is in a sec, or we can just dump the SQL to see that change. So let's, let's do that. You can say dump SQL. And you can see we get this command, which if we run force will be run against our database. Now it's really tempting to do that because it's easy, but in doing so, we sort of lost track of the changes that are happening to our database. At least it makes it a lot more difficult to track those changes. So these changes are generated based on the changes that we make to our entity. So Doctrine's gonna look at what we've got in the database or not got in the database as it stands currently, and then figure out what changes we need to make to get our entity back in sync with the underlying database table or tables. And it seems really strange that we would use something like Git to version control our code, but have just a sort of wild west approach to our database. And whilst at this stage, there's no real danger of forcing through these changes. After all, we've got nothing in the database, no data, no tables or whatever. So if it all goes wrong, we can just drop the database and start again, pretty much. But obviously, as your site grows, that becomes less of a preferable option. So instead, I'm going to use Doctrine Migrations Bundle which is, as the name sort of suggests, part of the Doctrine ecosystem. There are other migration libraries available, but Doctrine Migrations Bundle does the job for me. So I'll link to a little bit more 
on this in the show notes. But for now, I'm just going to do a composer require doctrine slash doctrine hyphen migrations hyphen bundle and then the carrot 1.0. So this is all just taken pretty much from the documentation. So there's nothing really to worry about here. As I say, I'll link to a little bit more on this in the show notes. But if I did go to the docs, it's literally just copy paste anyway. So I might as well just type it in. Looks like PHP Storm's not quite aware of this yet, but the installation seems to have gone to plan. And there we go with the updated index, everything should be good. And again, we'll need to add in a little bit of config for this. So just inside config.yaml, I'm just going to add the config in. And again, this is pretty much just copy paste from the documentation. Okay, so we should be good to go at this point. If we jump back to our command line, do a php bin console doctrine colon migrations. You can see we've got a bunch in here, generate, migrate, etc., etc. The one that we're interested in at this stage is diff because that's the one that's going to generate the migration for us. Now I've got another series on doing doctrine migrations. It's actually the first series that I ever did for code review. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about this, then please do check out that series. And again, I'll link to that in the show notes. We'll just diff that and you can see, firstly at the top, it's going to go ahead and create us a migrations file. And these are the contents of that file. Now, rather than looking at it on the command line, we'll look at it inside PHP Storm and you can see this command here is what would be applied. And if we look at that, it'd be nice to add a little bit of extra format into it. But essentially what that is, is identical to that command there. And you can see what's also nice about this is if we decide to roll this back or revert the change, we also have the inverse. So there we're creating the table, there we're dropping it. So that's quite nice. Truth is, in reality, rolling back is never as straightforward as this, or it rarely is anyway. Often you would want to roll forward, which is another conversation entirely. What we're interested in now though is actually applying this migration. So again, we could have used that schema update force command. Instead, now we've got a little bit more of a controlled way of doing this. So we'll do a PHP bin, console, doctrine, migrations, and then migrate. That gives us a little warning. We don't need to worry about that too much at the moment. Our database is completely blank anyway. So let's just accept that. You can see that we've migrated. And if now we look inside our database, we have two tables, the wallpaper table, which is empty, but it's got the expected columns. And then the migrations version, which contains one entry, which is a representation of the same file that we've just applied. So at this point, we've got a table set up, got our entity, and in the very next video, we're gonna create ourselves a console command to allow us to populate that entity and save the data off to this new database table. See you in the next video.